going to do something a little bit different this morning. Um, it, many of you, on Sunday night, I have been going through the back to the basics. And this morning, I've decided to preach uh, usually what I preach on Sunday night. I'm going to preach it this morning. And so, um, if you've been here on Sunday night, we have been looking at the subject of salvation. And what are we saved from? How are we saved? And many of you may think, well, Brother Tony, that's just kind of elementary. But I believe sometimes we need to go back to the basics uh, because some of us really, we have, a, we have trouble sometimes knowing what we believe and why we believe it. Uh, just because Aunt Sadie and Uncle Sap taught you that, uh, doesn't necessarily mean that it's all true, okay? So we're going to look in the Word of God this morning. Um, you know, that's one of the things that, among many things, that I promised God when I surrendered to preach, that I would preach all truth. Because I believe that Scripture, all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, for correction, instruction, and righteousness. Uh, for reproof even, you know, sometimes we may not like exactly what the Word of God says, amen? Uh, but I believe that we need to be obedient to the Word of God. So we're going to look at something, and I've entitled this message, uh, Let's Follow Jesus. How many of you, that song hit, hit it right on the head, Sister Joyce? Folks, we need to understand as Christians, as saved again, born again believers, we need to understand how important it is, it is to follow Jesus, to follow Christ. And so we're going to look at some things uh, that some of you may have never heard of in Scripture, but I promise you this, it is the truth of God's Word. And I can prove it, and we're going to back it up with the Word of God this morning. And some of these subjects may be a little bit touchy, and you may again have never heard of some of these things um, but I want you to to understand it's so important as we enter this phase we've just come out of salvation now we're going what happens when we get saved after we get saved do we just go and sit on a pew with Joe and a few mo amen you know uh, some of us we say you know we, we've done it we've arrived uh, I've, I've accepted Christ as my Savior uh, the Holy Spirit has come to live inside of me, uh, so what do I do next? And again, these sermons uh, were first uh, started uh, to, to instruct people in their new Christian life. But I found out a long time ago that some of us that have been maybe in a church uh, for years, we don't know what we believe and why we believe it. So we're going again to, to get uh, and understand salvation. Understand that salvation, and we talked about this, is a new creative act. And what do I mean by that? We have become a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. How many of y'all agree with that? You become a new creature. It just kind of amazes me sometimes. I, uh, when I preach God's Word, I, you know, a, a, a story comes to my mind when I start talking about this new creature, when we first get saved, again, we become a new creature. It reminds me of a story. There were, there were some explorers in the rainforest in the Amazon, and uh, there, there were so many, there were several explorers on this, uh, around this campfire, and one of the ex uh, headhunters, or, you know, in that part of the country or that part of the world, uh, there are some headhunters, and they believe in cannibalism. How many of you, I need to explain that, what that means. That means when they look at me, they see a meal for three months. Okay? But as, as they were, this one guy was a, had, had, had first believed in cannibalism, and he, again, he was from the Amazon, and, and, but through a preacher or a missionary, uh, this man that once was a cannibal uh, and a headhunter, uh, he accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior, and he got saved. And so that night around the campfire, uh, he's sitting there reading the Word of God after uh, he had been saved for several months. And, 
and, and, and in this group of explorers, there was one guy that was an atheist. And again, an atheist is someone that does not believe in God. Amen? They believe everything that we're doing here this morning is all null and void. They don't believe in God whatsoever. And so as he's watching this ex-cannibal from the Amazon rainforest reading the Word of God, he's stirring a pot and reading the Word of God, and he's stirring a pot and reading the Word of God, and the atheist looks at him and notices and recognizes that he's reading the Word of God. And he says, I can't believe you're reading this Bible. You know, none of that's true. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in the Word of God. He said, I can't believe that you actually believe that it changes your life and you become a new creature. Do you believe all that? He said, I certainly do, the cannibal said, because three months ago you would have been in the pot. Amen? Folks, I believe that Jesus Christ can change our hearts and He can change our lives. And I want you to turn your Bibles to John chapter 12. John chapter 12, verse 26. I want us to consider as a text for starting this discipleship, this verse of Scripture. John chapter 12 and verse 26. How many of you got your Bibles? Hold them up. Amen. I love to hear those Bible pages rustling. What does it say in verse 26? If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. So it has never been our Lord's will for anyone to be satisfied with just being saved. Jesus often said, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Peter wrote in the word of God, that ye should show forth the praises of him that called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Paul wrote, his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. James wrote, and you'll, you'll sound, the sound of this verse will be so familiar, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Our crucified and now risen Lord deserves the abundant glory which only comes when we bear much fruit, folks. We can only bear that fruit if we follow Jesus. You got, y'all got that this morning? Raise your hand, nod your head. Some of you, I can hear it when you nod your head. Now understand, discipleship, part of discipleship, and this is where we come into after we're saved, what is the first step, y'all listen very closely, what is the first step of obedience after you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior? Baptism. Now again, this is part of the discipleship, okay? Now, what is baptism? That's the first step. Step Again, that's number one. Baptism. What is baptism? Now, some of you have got a lot of questions. I understand that. And I invite you to ask questions. Amen. Folks, I believe that we need to learn the Word of God in what it says. And you're going to hear me say this several times, maybe during this sermon. Here's what the problem is with many people that I've pastored and many people that have questions, there's nothing wrong with having questions, but understand, when we start interjecting our opinions, and when we start interjecting what we believe, because it doesn't, again, everything that this church does is not socially acceptable. But we're not here to be socially acceptable. Amen? Because the world is not... Folks, we are weird, amen? Y'all remember when me preaching that sermon? We are different. But here's what happens. Many times we interject maybe our opinion or what we think or what it, we think that it should be or the way it should be. Folks, it does. if it doesn't match up with the Word of God, 
It doesn't matter what you think or what you say. Y'all get that? Now, we're going to look at the Word of God. What is baptism? Now, again, where did it come from? Who has, here's the big question, and many, many of you may have this, who has the authority to baptize? Amen. What is the church? We're going to get to all that, okay? Now, understand, baptism is first mentioned in Scripture where? John the Baptist. Amen? Now, Old Testament prophets, if you'll do a study on baptism, Old Testament prophets used water as an outward symbol for internal cleansing. In Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 16, again, write that down. You know, if if you're wanting proof uh, of baptism or whatever uh, in the Old Testament, it talks about a washing or a cleansing. Uh, Folks, it was used in the Old Testament as a ceremonial cleansing. Now, John the Baptist, like I just said, first baptized and was given the authority to baptize in the New Testament. Who gave John the Baptist the authority? If you'll read, uh, the Holy Spirit did. God did. Amen. So, he was given that authority to baptize in the New Testament. We see this, and I want you to turn to to Matthew chapter 3. Put your thinking caps on, amen? Matthew chapter 3. Now, it's going to be recorded, and you can write, I'll I'll give you these reference scriptures. It's going to be recorded in the Gospels, okay? But we're going to look at this one in Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 through verse 6. It says, In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is, is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, which is Isaiah, saying, The voice of a one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out uh, to him Jerusalem and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, there was a group of people, if you read on, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, why were they named the Sadducees? Because they had a frown on their face all the time. They were sad, you see. Some of y'all, I lost you. Y'all thought I was getting serious, didn't you? I am serious about this, amen? But you'll see that he was given the authority to baptize. I want you to understand that. I want you to get that. Because you're going to notice that in Mark chapter 1, verse 1 through 11, it gives the same same thing. In Luke chapter 3, verse 1 through verse 22, John the Baptist is given the authority Understand, John the Baptist was given authority to baptize. Jesus went to John because of his authority. Amen. Baptism is to be administered by the proper authority. Why do you say that, Brother Tony? Some people believe out here in the world or in other religions, they believe that just anybody can baptize you. Amen. Folks, that was never, has never, ever, listen to this, It has never been the case in the Word of God that anybody, it has to be done with the proper authority. Now, you'll see here uh, in Luke chapter 4, turn over here. Turn to Luke chapter 4. We're going to turn a lot this morning. If y'all hurry up and get, listen, I'll get done. In Luke chapter 4, you'll see that the temptation of Jesus, we read, the, read the, the verse, the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. This is really just a reference scripture in Luke chapter 4. To be tempted of the devil. Then we follow Jesus through his life in all of his miracles. Y'all with me? In all of his teaching of doctrine. And I want you to understand the word doctrine in the word of God. Very important. 
The doctrine in the Word of God is the teachings of Jesus Christ. Y'all get that? And it's true doctrine. Why? Because Jesus taught it. Amen? So when you see the doctrine, you see the life of Christ. A uh, little over three years, Jesus walked this earth during his personal ministry during this time. All those miracles were done. Everything <clears throat> that Christ done all pointed to either himself or God the Father. It never pointed. He never done a miracle. He never done anything to point to anything else but God the Father or himself as being Christ. Amen? Then we, again, we follow Jesus through all that. And you'll notice then at the end of Jesus' life, Jesus was crucified, he was buried in a bald tomb, and he rose again. And he told his disciples, turn over, uh, before he left, look at Luke chapter 24. <clears throat> when you get there, hold your Bible up. Luke 24. <clears throat> Won't you look at verse 44? Luke 24, verse 44. It says, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was wet yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it is behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among, among all nations, <clears throat> beginning at Jerusalem. Now, what you're seeing here is you're seeing the setup of, again, the church started on the seashores of Galilee. Amen? Y'all getting this? And understand, it's setting up the moment in time when the day of Pentecost was come and the church was empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen? And you're going to see before Jesus leaves... Amen. There has to be a comforter. He says in the Word of God that the comforter will come. And you know who that comforter is? It is the Holy Spirit will come. It empowers the church. And you'll notice that on that day, amen, you look in Matthew, and we're going to look at here in just a few minutes, but I'm going to say it right now too. In Matthew 28, is the church is given the authority, a scriptural church is given the authority to baptize. Y'all getting this? Now, let's read on here. It says, And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until, here it is, ye be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands, and we'll know, you look and see the ascension of Christ. Now, I want you to look at something else. Look at Acts chapter 1. Turn over. But I told you going too fast. Y'all come on. Acts chapter 1. Bubba, I may not wrote all this stuff down. You're going to notice the ascension, verse 1 through verse 9. Y'all seeing that? And then you'll notice, we're not going to read all that verse 1 through verse 9, but I do want to, that's the ascension, okay? And who is this talking to in the book of Acts? Who is this the formula for? Who is this talking? This is talking about the church. Y'all getting this? So, Brother Tony, how do you know? Well, let's look at verse, verse 3 of chapter 1. It says, To whom also you showed himself alive, to whom there write this down above it to whom is church that's talking to the church okay also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together here it is again above that word together you know who that was assembled the church Acts chapter 1, the whole book of Acts is talking about who? The church. This is the first church of Jerusalem. Jesus has given them in the book of 
in the book of Matthew and also in the book of Mark and also in the book of John. He has given them their marching orders. He says that you are to baptize first. They are to repent of their sins and they will be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He has given them, and we know this, is the great commission that He gave to the church. And then in Acts, you're going to see the church alive and working well. You know how we know that? Because it goes on a little bit further, and it says they had all things in common. Amen. They believed the same doctrine. They went from house to house, fellowshipping, breaking of bread. Folks, those things were the recipe of a local New Testament church. They taught the truth of God's Word. So you see this in the Scripture. Turn to, now again, baptism and the authority was given to the church, a scriptural church. Look at Acts chapter 2. Turn over a page. Look at verse 40 through verse 47. Y'all with me? It says, And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Look at verse 41. I love this. And they that gladly received his word were baptized. Now I want you to notice the order of things there. It doesn't say that they got baptized and that was the part, the first part of salvation. Some people are messed up on that. What does it say there? Then they that gladly received his word. You know what that is? They received Christ. They received salvation. Y'all get that? And then they were baptized. In the same day they were added unto them, and I want you to underline that word them. You know who that is? The church. Amen? Some of y'all got, whoo, Brother Tony. I don't know if I can get, I don't know if I can handle all this. Folks, the church of the living, it makes a difference. It makes a difference what you believe in. Amen? It makes a difference where you belong to. We have to understand that we need to preach the truth of God's Word. Our doctrine has to be true. Folks, if in any point, you, listen to this, in any point of your doctrine is false, you're totally false. That's hard words. But I want to tell you something. It's the truth. <laughs> Amen? So you see here, and let's look on verse 42. And they can, this is what our church should do. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. What did I say doctrine was? Teachings of Jesus. They, they steadfast. They fellowshiped. They taught the doctrine. They taught the Word of God. Look, look, and it says, In breaking of bread and in prayers, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all that believed were together and had all things common. Y'all notice in the recipe for a church? Oh, man, verse 45, And they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men and had every need. Now, some folks, they say, Well, well, Tony, I'm gonna, does that mean i got to go sell everything that i got? No. But when somebody's in need, we need to, amen, we need to help them. We're going to do that this morning here in a little bit. We're going to take up a love offering for a family that needs it. Amen. Well, you see here, and they are continuing, verse 46, daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness. And then you see that, singleness of heart you know what that means that means they were all focused on the same thing which is God y'all see what a church is supposed to be amen y'all see what makes a scriptural church scriptural churches have the authority to baptize always in scripture amen now so but Tony I just well, let me tell you something. I love you. Amen. If you don't agree with that, I'm going to tell you this. Come and sit down with me in Christian love. Amen. And show me in the Word of God your belief and why you believe it. Amen. And I'll show you in the Word of God 
what the Word of God says. And how, what we, let me tell you something. The Bible never contradicts itself. Amen? If it says somewhere and you think, well, it says right there I can lose my salvation, and then it says in Romans chapter 8 that nothing can separate you from the love of God, no, um, no or angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, you know that ver- ver- the Bible doesn't contradict itself, so you know something's not right. Okay? So you see this, and, you, and, and I want you to understand the right authority. Amen? Now, it goes on, and again, I believe that this church and our scriptural churches have the authority. What is a church, Brother Tony? In the Greek, the church means ecclesia. Listen to this. It's a group of saved, baptized believers. In Acts, it says that we have all things in common. Amen? A scriptural church is one that preaches and teaches of the doctrine of Jesus, the Word of God. A false teaching is taught is a false church. False churches do not have the authority to baptize. You just got wet. Amen? In scripture, baptism was to be done by the proper authority. And it carries on today through scriptural churches. Now, again in Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20, it says, Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or Holy Ghost, a man teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now many of us, we take that last part and we say, that's the reason why I don't fly. But that scripture means that the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit will be with us no matter where we are. This is the great commission given to this scriptural church. And it's given to us today. Y'all get that? Now, baptism has no saving virtue, or some would teach, as, as some would teach. Salvation is a birth. Baptism is the picture of the death bear on resurrection of Jesus Christ. Baptism, in essence, is an outward picture and testimony to the world of an inward experience. What happens to us when we are saved? Amen? Some people say, well, Brother Tony, what is the method of baptism? Let's turn over to Acts chapter 8. Turn over a few scriptures. I'm almost done. Acts chapter 8. Look at verse 36 actually start in verse 35 some people ask the method of baptism and the order of baptism amen folks I want you to understand this look at verse 35 says then Philip and understand who Philip was he was a part of the first church amen some people make this say well but Tony he just went out and just baptized he was part of the Jerusalem church he went out and he, he was doing his You see, what's happened at this point in time, they were being persecuted, and you see, uh, they thought that the the exact opposite would happen, and what happened? But Tony, explain yourself. Folks, understand, they thought if they persecuted the true church, that it would snuff it out. But what they did, how many of you have ever seen one of those little white lilies? What's the name of it, Mr. Agriculture? Dandelions? The ones that has the little white, what is that? You blow them and it's a little white thing. Is that dandelion? See, I don't know. I'm not agriculture. I mean, unless you can eat it, I don't know. You can? I mean, if you put ranch on anything, you can eat it. The first church acted just like a dandelion. They were blown up, and what they did is they ended up spreading the Word of God. This is part of Philip here. Amen? Philip, he goes, opened his mouth and began at the same Scripture. Now, this Ethiopian eunuch, give you a little background. I've I've preached on this before. He's riding in a chariot, and he's reading out of the book of Isaiah, and Philip comes up to him and says, Hey! 
He's running beside the chariot, amen? He says, hey, do you understand what you're reading? <clears throat> then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture. And guess what? He didn't say, well, if you do good works and you give a good money, give me your money and I'll get you to Jesus. What did he do? He preached unto him Jesus. I'm going to tell you something. Many times we're doing ministry and church all wrong. You don't argue with somebody out here in the world about different doctrine. You need to preach unto them Jesus. Because they don't understand until they know Jesus. Amen. Preach unto them Jesus. And look at verse 36. And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Undoubtedly, some of them were being baptized, amen, and they thought that that was saving them. He said, what, what doth hinder me to be baptized? What does Philip say? If thou, y'all get this, verse 37, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. Y'all see what the order of salvation is? Believe. Accept Jesus Christ. New creature. A change. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And look at old Philip done. Woo! He commanded this chair to stand still. I got a sermon I, I built on this. And I said, I hold my mule. I believe I'm going to shout. Amen? And get, but look here. It also not only gives the order of salvation here, Brother Philip, but it also gives the mode of baptism. What does it say? He, st he said, they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Now, said so Brother Tony, if it was just, and I'm going to get this, sprinkling and infant baptism has never been scriptural. Amen. If, it was, if, if sprinkling was scriptural, he would have just got his flask out and just sprinkled a little water on him and been done. But you'll notice that when Jesus was even baptized, they went down in the water, and when he come up out of the water, again, baptism does not mean rantizo. It means baptizo. It means total immersion. There's a difference. If you look at it in the Greek, you cannot misunderstand baptism it is full immersion it is a picture of the death the burial and the resurrection of Christ folks and I've given this example brother Terrell if a dog gets run over outside and I tell you to go out and bury that dog you're not going to, now if he goes out and gets a handful of dirt and just sprinkles that dirt on him and says oh man I'm done guess what in a few days he's going to stinketh you got to bury him. Amen. Baptism has always been the picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. You notice that. They went both down into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And they were come up out of the water. The Spirit of the Lord called away Philip, and the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. And guess what? Again, the church was being persecuted and guess what? It's growing. It's growing. They're going wherever they go and spreading the Word of God. Do y'all get this? We must not minimize baptism. It has no saving value to put away sin. The first church in Acts put great emphasis on its importance. Future blessings from God. Y'all listen to this. Pivot on this first act of obedience. Where we mess up as believers is interjecting what we think and what we believe instead of what God's Word says. Amen? As I close, again, future blessings depend on what we do and how we believe and how we discipline ourselves as the Lord's church. Amen? Y'all listen to this. Remember, what man thinks is not what God says. It's not up for a vote. 
It's not up to how you feel about the Word. It matters what God's Word says. And we are to be obedient to His Word. Future blessings of the church, what are you talking about, Brother Tony? Souls being saved and lives being changed. Amen? Folks, I'm going to tell you something. Everything that I've ever done in my life, I've done it 110%. Amen? When I surrender to preach, I surrender to God that I would preach the truth no matter the consequences of the truth. Amen? What I've said here and preached here today, not everybody in here agrees with it. Amen? Not everybody may not agree with it. Guess what? Let's go to the Word of God. Look at the Word. See what it says. Now, my question to you today is, are you saved? Amen? Do you know Christ? If you called upon the name of the Lord to save you today? I mean, take everything. Y'all listen, look at my big old nose. Have, are you saved? Is the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart? Put everything, put the pride and being scared and saying, oh, but Tony, I just can't. I don't care how old you are. If you're, if you're lost here today and the Lord's speaking to your heart, you need to be saved. Amen? It's time to stop playing games at the foot of the cross. Time is getting short. The eternity hangs in the balance. And if you're saved here today, say, but Tony, beyond a shadow of a doubt, y'all see that page I handed out? The assurance of your salvation. If you're saved here today, here's my next question. Are you scripturally baptized by a scriptural authority? Y'all get that? Say, but Tony, I, <laughs> I can't. Put your pride aside. Let's look at the Word. We've already done that this morning. How about it? Do you need scriptural baptism? Do you want to be a part of this church? Brother Tony, ain't nobody ever preached this to us. Let me tell you something. I, I have to answer to God for what I preach. Amen? And I can walk out of here today with my head up and know that I preached the truth to you today. Amen? I ain't scared. Amen? Everybody stand. Come today. As we sing, what number? 